Hello and welcome everyone. We are here for the first official presentation in our nat nat nature, oh, sorry, nature Science Webinar Series. I knew that would be a mouthful. I am Leslie Esslinger, the Director of Education here at Becker School Supplies, along with our behind the scenes team today of Rob, Terry, Marilyn, making sure that things are gonna go smoothly and answering your questions in the chat box. Um, once again, you are in for a treat. If you joined us for Kitchen Science, you already know that. If you are already a fan of nature, we're glad you're here. If you want to learn some really cool stuff about worms, you're definitely in the right place. If you have young children with you, as I know some of you do, we're so happy that you're here with us. And for those of you that are here as teachers today without children in tow, Welcome, we think you will get a lot out of this presentation. Not only is Holly going to share some great content, but she presents it in a way as if she's presenting to students. So you will also learn some terrific strategies for engaging children during story time and during the activities. I do have a spoiler alert. There might be some giggling that goes on when Holly mentions worm poop, which she will do not once, not twice, but stay tuned and you'll find out. Uh, and a final note, uh, Holly does mention during this, keeping a journal, making observations. So if you wanna grab some paper and pencils, you might wanna participate in that today as well. Some questions we'll try to get out of the way, the things that might be on your mind. Will you receive a certificate? Absolutely. Um, if you attend all four of these webinar sessions, and we call them webinars because they're basically mini presentations that are for little people and the adults that are with them. So there are four 30-minute presentations we're going to do over the course of the next four weeks. If you attend all four 30-minute presentations or watch the recordings, we will be able to send you a professional development certificate, which Terry designed for you, which is on your screen. Will there be a recording available? Absolutely. Um, we know that some people can't make it to all four. Uh, some people want to watch it again if they miss something. So yes. And in our chat box, there will be a link to how you get the recording. And I also will send that to you in a follow-up email. Uh, where can I get a printed copy of the activity? Once again, we We've put everything onto one page um, at shoppecker.com. That, that's another link that Terry or Marilyn will put in the chat box that you can access the printed copy of the activity. And also, uh, Marilyn's going to be, uh, Marilyn, sorry, Holly's going to be uh, introducing a new book each week. And those books will be available as well. I'm going to talk to you about those after Holly's session and also give you a promo code. So you'll definitely want to stay tuned for that. So now I'd like to introduce Holly. Uh, she is a certified teacher. She spent 16 years working at the Academy of Natural Sciences in Philadelphia, which is my hometown. And currently she works for a nonprofit organization providing literacy services to young children. She's very well versed in STEAM and STEM, has done a lot of programs for classrooms, families, teachers, and is here today to do what she loves best um, my favorite parts of uh, my, my favorite information about Holly today are the things that are on your screen right now. She happens to love worms. She loves to read picture books about science and nature is one of her favorite topics. So this should be should be a lot of fun for everybody. I do um, want to give you as somebody asked in the chat previously, what can I expect today. So I'm going to turn it over to Holly in just a few seconds. I'm sure all of our children are very eager to get going. And Holly's going to start out by introducing the topic. She's going to read a terrific story about worms. And then get ready for it. Um, she will be talking about worm poop. And also she will be um, showing you some live worms. And then at the very end of the session, she'll be doing an activity. So I hope everybody hangs in there for that. So here we go.
Hi everyone, Holly here with Becker School Supplies. I am so excited to be back doing another great series of webinars with you and your family and your classrooms. This time, we're gonna be exploring nature science. Oh, I love going outside. There's always so much to observe. For those of you who were with me last time, we talked a lot about observations. Do you remember how to make an observation? How do we observe things? Yeah, we could see them, we could hear them, we could touch them, we could smell them, or we could taste them. That's right, we use our five senses to make observations. So great, and nature's the perfect place to make observations. But I want you to try something special this time around. Now we're gonna be making observations during our webinars, but even when you're outside doing your own exploration, I want you to try keeping a nature journal, okay? Now, a nature journal doesn't have to be anything fancy. It's just a place for you to write down your observations because any good scientist needs to be able to share what they've learned because if scientists didn't share what they learned, we wouldn't know anything. We'd have to start over every time we explored something. So you're going to have to share with your fellow scientists by keeping a journal. Now, your journal can just be a notebook that you have and you can use pencils or markers or crayons to draw or write in it. Or you can have a fancy journal, the nature journal here. But you can, no matter what you use, the important thing is that you're taking notes, you're drawing pictures, maybe you're keeping samples if you find a really cool leaf or something that you wanna show someone later. A nature journal is a great way to be able to share what you've learned with other scientists. Sound good? So anytime I say, what did you notice? Or what did you observe? That's a great time to break out your nature journal during these webinars. Sound good? Great, because today we've got lots of cool stuff to observe. We're talking about one of my favorite types of animals. Now when everyone thinks about their favorite animal, okay, that's actually, that's actually what I want you to do. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to picture your favorite animal. Maybe it's furry or fluffy or cute. Mine's not any of those things. In fact, it's not fluffy at all. So let's see what my favorite animal is as we start our story today. Okay, are you ready to read our story? Great, so let's get started. Okay, so this is the cover of our story. It's called We Dig Worms by Kevin McCloskey. So what do you think my favorite animal is? Well, one of my favorite animals, I like lots of animals. It's worms, I love worms worms. So let's look at this cover here. What are some things you notice or you observe about the cover? Right, you may have noticed that there is a child and she's looking down. What do you think she's looking at? It looks like she's looking in a hole. Hmm. And then you might say that there are worms around the outside. Now there's something very special about the illustrations of this book. They weren't made on a computer necessarily, and they weren't made on a regular piece of paper. What does it look like they were painted on? Yes, paper bags. Our author illustrator, Kevin McCloskey, used paper bags to um, make the pages for the story. So cool. It's like recycling. And that's going to be very important as we talk about our worms. Okay, here we are. Whoa, what's happening on this page? So we see all these blocks. And then in the first block, what's happening? Yep, our little worm's sort of poking out. And then the second one, he comes out a little bit more. And then it comes out a little bit more. And then he's all the way out of the hole. It's so cool how we can use those boxes to show us how the worm's moving. We Dig Worms by Kevin McCloskey. There are many different worms, tree worms, sea worms, and river worms. Now, we're mostly going to be talking about the worms that you find in your garden or in the dirt today. And I want to look at that tree worm right there. He's really cool, but I've got a secret. He's not really a worm. He's a caterpillar. Those little inchworms that you see up in trees, we call them inchworms, but they're actually caterpillars. They're still cool, though. And gummy worms! Are those your favorite kind of worms? Me too, I really like gummy worms. The worms in parks and gardens are called earthworms. Why do you think they might be called earthworms? 
Can they dig in the earth? Or they dig in the ground. Now, the uh, child on this page is doing something really important and something you can do too, as long as you're grown up, say it's okay. They're taking pictures. Pictures are another great thing to add to your nature journal. So as you're exploring outside, take pictures and add them to your nature journal too. So there's another animal on this page. What's the other animal on this page? It's a bird. Hmm, I wonder if that bird's gonna be important. Hello, little worm, says the bird. Worms feel light through their skin. What do we use to observe light? Yeah, we use our eyeballs, but worms don't have eyes. They have no eyes and no nose. So instead, they sort of sense the light through their whole bodies. Pretty neat. Worms do a lot of important work. They really do. They do lots of important work, like recycling and digging. Oh, we're going to get into all of that. I don't want to give it away. Now, our bird is saying something. He's saying, I said, hello, little worm. Hmm. What do you think that bird's up to? Hmm. So here's one thing that worms do. So we have the worm on the other page, and he's saying, I eat dead leaves and bugs. Why is that important work? Why do you think? Hmm, let's find out. My tunnels bring air and water to the soil to help plants grow. When worms dig, twisting and turning, they make the earth earthier. Hmm, so we've learned two things so far that worms do for the soil. They eat dead leaves and other dead things in the soil, and they bring air and water to the soil by twisting and digging and turning. Hmm. My poop is good for the soil. Ew! That's my favorite thing. So we talked about how they eat the dead stuff. That's really important. It's basically cleaning up the soil. They're kind of like um, uh, uh, taking away the, the garbage in the soil, the things that's not so good for the plants. So they're eating them. And after they eat, they do what all animals do. They poop, and their poop is so good for the soil. And we can see here on this page, it says worm poop is called castings. Really, really good for plants. Plants love worm poop. It helps them to grow up big and strong. So on this next page, we see the kids talking about the worms. Worms are cool. I think so, too. Maybe you, says the other kid. Worms feel cool. They have cold blood. Hmm. Have you ever heard the term cold-blooded or warm-blooded? Yeah, we are warm-blooded. That means our body is the same temperature no matter where we go. If we go outside and it's cold and we go outside when it's hot, you were to take our temperature, we kind of stay at the same, except if we've got a fever or we're sick, but we stay at the same temperature all the time. Cold-blooded animals, their body temperature changes depending on where they live. Worms like to stay nice and cool under the soil, but if they were outside where it was too hot, their bodies would get really, really hot. That's why they're cold-blooded, like other things like snakes and lizards. <gasps> what is on this page? This author has given us so much neat information about worms. So this page says map of the worm. It tells us all the different parts. So in the top we see those little things that look like grains of rice. Those are called cocoons. And inside those cocoons are worm eggs. And it says worms are born from cocoons. And then right next to that in the other circle, we have CT. CT, can you say that with me? CT. Oh, it's so fun to say. Those are the little hairs that like, are like bristles that come out of the side of the worm. And it says CT are tiny bristles that help worms move. So cool. So then we look at the outside of the worm and we look at the inside of the worm. How does the worm inside look different than our insides? What things do we have inside that the worms don't have? Bones are the biggie. They don't have bones. They're what we call invertebrates. We're vertebrates. We've got a nice strong backbone and bones all over our body. Worms are invertebrates. They don't have any bones inside. So cool. Uh, Mr. Worm, why do you come out after the rain? Can the what? 
I never thought about just asking the worms all the cool things I want to know about them. So this kid's got the right idea. They just go ahead and ask the worm. Let's see if our worms answer. It's easier to wriggle when it's wet because worms move and breathe better when it's wet. So cool. I wonder if I asked a worm outside if he'd give me more information. What do you think? We'll have to try it, huh? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Worm. Do you have a big family? Oh, yes, says the worm. One worm can have 100 babies. Well, that's good. We've learned that worms are really important. They move the soil around to let air and water in, and they eat the dead stuff, and they poop, making the soil even better. So having that many babies is awesome for the soil. So good job, worms. Hmm, how many worms live here? Over one million worms can live in a small park. Hmm. So next time you're outside, I want you to think about how many worms might be in your backyard or in your neighborhood or at the playground. There are so many ways to think about how many worms are living in all the places we visit this time. Now, I notice one of our other uh, animal friends is back on this page. Who's back? Yeah, that bluebird. And what is he saying? He's saying, yum. Why would a bluebird be saying yum when we're talking about all the worms living in the park? Some birds eat worms. That's another really important thing that worms provide. Not only are they really good for the soil, but they're food for other animals. So our worms better watch out for that bluebird. He looks pretty hungry. Yum, yum, he says. Oh, he's getting hungrier. How big is the biggest worm in the world? And then we see a picture on the other page, and it says, and it goes all the way around the worm. I love how the author did that. I like that they're using the words to sort of show us how the worm is going. And it says, the Australian Gippsland worm grows to 10 feet long. That's taller than you. That's taller than your grown up because those worms down there are saying, wow, it's as tall as an elephant. Now it's not as wide as an elephant, but if you were to stretch out that really long Australian Gippsland worm, it would be 10 feet long and that's taller than an elephant. Hi, little worm. Uh oh, our bluebird's back. I'm uh, hungry. Want to have lunch with me? Do you think he means with him? <laughs> why did the little worm go away was it something bluebird said why did the worm go in his hole yeah he doesn't like the invitation for lunch because he thinks it's an invitation to be lunch uh oh and now the bluebird is screaming down to the hole he says i want to meet you for lunch worm <laughs> Sorry, Bluebird, I have important worm, worm work to do. I added the worm there. I have important work to do. Now here you can see all those tunnels again that the worms make in the soil. That's again, that's really, really good. It adds air by moving the soil around and it allows a place for water to get down deeper into the soil. Worms are so important. <gasps> Whoa. Do you think that's all one long worm? Probably not, but do you see the roots of the plants there? Yeah, so if you look at the top of the page, you can see all the little roots going down into the soil. The roots have an easier time finding the water and getting the nutrients because the worms are there, because they're loosening that soil, and they're making sure the roots can get what they need. And of course, they're pooping there too, and that poop is exactly what those plants need. Maybe tomorrow, says the bluebird. Do you think the worm's going to have lunch with them tomorrow? Nope, he should probably stay underground, huh? <laughs> so our little girl says, thank you, worms. And now our worm goes back into its hole. The end. Did you like that book? Did you learn anything new about worms that you didn't know before you read? I learned that the longest worm is 10 feet long. It's so long. I've seen so many worms, but never a 10 foot long worm. Crazy. Did you write anything down in your notebook to share later with another scientist? So 
cool. You want to have those notebooks out because we're going to talk about finding worms. Do you know where to find worms? Yeah, in our story, we learned there are lots of worms, maybe underneath the park or in your neighborhood or in your backyard. But there's another place I want to talk about. It's called a compost heap. Okay, so I have a worm compost bin at my house. That means that I have a place where I put things like kitchen scraps and leaves and dirt and a little bit of grass and things like that. And I have worms who do their jobs by turning all of those things into rich compost for my plants. Remember how the worms do it? They move the dirt around by letting water and air come through them, and they eat all the dead stuff. In this case, I'm giving them the dead stuff. I'm giving them maybe the tops of strawberries or potato peels, and they're eating them, and then what are they doing? They're pooping. Those castings are so good for my plants. So I want to take you inside my compost bin, not really inside my compost bin. That'd be very, very messy. But I have a video of me sort of digging around in my compost bin so you can see a little bit what it looks like. Grown-ups, if you want to start a compost bin or a worm uh, bin of your own, at the end of this webinar, there'll be a blog post that will have some resources for you to check out to start your own compost bin, no matter how much space you have, if you, whether, or not, whether or not you have a backyard, you'll be able to start one. Okay, so let's look inside my compost bin. All right, here we are. It's just in a regular Rubbermaid container, and we can see from the top we don't see a lot of worms, because where are the worms, you think? Yeah, they dug down nice and deep. So I'm going to pull a little bit of my compost back, and there they are. There are so many worms there, and, and there are some of my kitchen scraps. So the day before, I had added some peels from a sweet potato for my dinner. And there they all are. So the worms are starting to eat them. Okay, now, if I'm going to go back in a couple more days, I'm not going to see a lot of those scraps anymore because the worms will have eaten them all. And then, of course, after they eat, they're going to poop. And those castings are going to be great for my plants next spring. So as I'm digging around here, you can see there's even more worms. Now, I started my um, compost bin with a thousand... I'm going to have so many worms making so much good compost for my plants. Pretty neat, right? Okay, now that we've seen the compost bin where my worms live, I want to take a closer look at them. So here on the camera, I bought a bit of my compost uh, so we can look at the worms really, really close. So let's take a close look at these worms. Now, what sort of observations can you make? What do you notice about these worms? Right, you may have noticed they look shiny or slimy. You may have noticed that some of the worms are fatter and some of them are skinnier. Uh, some are longer and some are shorter. And you may have noticed that they're moving around a lot. Now, where are they going? Because now we can see less of them than we saw before. Right, they're going underground. You can see they're starting to dig. Now, when you dig, what part of your body do you use? Right, you use your hands mostly. You can dig, sorry, my hands are really dirty. <laughs> so you can dig using your hands and your fingers, or you can use a shovel or a rake. Now, do worms do that? No. No, they don't do that. They don't have hands like we do. But there's a couple of things on their body that help them be really good diggers. And we've seen some of them in our story. Now, they're really muscly. Show me your muscles. Yeah, you got big muscles all over your body. And so do worms. Worms have two main kinds of mus muscles. They have muscles that go along their whole body, and they have rings of muscles in each of those sections or segments of their body. And those work together to help them to move. Now, I'm going to uh, take one of my worms out of the soil. I want to tell you something about observing worms and other animals like this. Worms love to be in the soil. That's where they feel safest. You can see all of my worms that were I brought up to the top when I brought my compost in have now dug almost all the way under the soil. That's where they're most comfortable. That's where they can breathe the best. But 
So if you ever sort of observe worms outside of the dirt, do so for very short periods of time. So I'm going to take one of our worms out and put it in a dish for just a little bit so we can look more closely at how their bodies move and how they use those muscles, okay? But if you uh, use a worm, if you're observing a worm at home, let's see, I'm going to grab one of these guys here. Make sure you don't leave them out of the soil for too long. All right, I'm going to move my worm into here, and then we're going to observe it in this dish right here. All right, let's look real close at this worm moving around. You can also look at its body parts a little bit better too. All right, so worms, unlike snakes, so if you ever seen some snakes move, some snakes make an S shape with their body like this. Let's look closely at our worm and see if that's what they're doing. Hmm, he's making a little bit of an S shape. <laughs> Of course, of course. I say that they don't make S shapes and then he makes one. But what I want you to look really close at is that sort of that stretching and pulling he's doing. Do you see all those little segments sort of stretch and pull, stretch and pull? Those are those muscles that are stretching and pulling. Now, can you do that with me? Can you be like a worm? We're going to use our arms like worms. So you're going to stretch and pull and stretch and pull pull, just like our worm. They stretch and pull. Those are those muscles. That's what helps them to move and helps them to dig. But there's another piece of uh, their body that helps them to stretch and dig and move around. And that has to do with tiny, those tiny little hairs on their body. Remember we saw those in the story? They help them to dig in the dirt really well too. Now we can't see them really well even if we look at them nice and closely on our camera here. It's hard for us to see them. If we had a magnifying glass, we'd be able to see them really well. Now did you notice anything else about my worm here? He's not alone. Who else is on the plate with him? Yep, there's another little tiny worm there. And it's moving the same way. It's stretching and pulling. Now, I know we're supposed to be talking about just worms today, but I couldn't do a whole session on worms and not talk about the other decomposers that live with worms and do a lot of the same things. They're so cool too. So we're gonna take a quick look. I brought a scoop full of dirt from my garden. Now this is not the compost bin. This is not where the worms are living, but this is where the compost is going to go when the worms are all done making it wonderful for my flowers. So here under the camera, let's take a close look at some of the other animals that might help in a soil. So I actually see two critters right now. Do you see them? Do you know what they are? They're both decomposers. So this little guy who's about to go underneath the soil here, he's a millipede. Millipedes are awesome decomposers just like worms. Now, they do have a hard shell on the outside. They're what we call arthropods. And of course, they've got legs, lots and lots of legs. Here, let me see if I can show, have him show you his legs a little bit. Oop, he kind of curled up there. See, he's gonna uncurl. You can see him moving around on his legs and he's holding on to that dirt. And he curls up in a little ball and now he goes, he's, he's getting uncurled there. Pretty neat. They're also really, really good at moving the soil. They eat the dead stuff just like worms will do and they poop just like the worms. So they're all still really, really good for the soil. So I'm gonna put my little millipede back and then let's look at some of the uh, other animals we saw in the, in the picture, like these guys right here. Do you know what those are? Yeah, you may call them roly polies, you may call them pill bugs, you may call them isopods. That's what I call them and that's what scientists call them too here. Let me move over. I know, I'm making me a little dizzy. They're moving so fast. They're also really good for the soil. They have a hard shell on the outside, just like our millipedes do, not our worms. Our millipedes have them. Um, and they're arthropods too. And they also have lots of, oh, there's our millipede again. And they also have lots and lots of legs, though not as many as our millipede do. Here comes both of them right now. So soil, healthy soil is filled with lots of decomposers, animals that make the soil better okay they move it around they eat stuff and of course they do what's super important they poop <laughs> what do you think of those cool critters neat right make sure you write down anything you want to remember in your journal that way you can share it with your other scientists and while you're doing that i want you to grab these supplies because we're going to make our own underground worm art Sounds neat. While you're doing that, I want to talk about a word I've been using, and that word is decomposer. 
Now I said the worms were decomposers and the pill bugs were decomposers and the millipedes were decomposers. Do you know what that word means? It has to do with what they eat. What do all of those animals eat? Yes, they eat the dead stuff and they make the soil better by cleaning it up and by eating that dead stuff. And then they poop and their poop is really, really good for the soil. Decomposers are so important. Neat stuff. Now, hopefully you have all your supplies because now we're going to make our own decomposer underground worm art. So you can see here on my camera, I've got a white sheet of paper and I've got a second piece of paper ready to go for this. So if you have one piece of paper for yourself, you're going to want another clean sheet of paper. And then I've got my paint and my string. So I've added my string to my paint because we all now know that worms are not dry. They are slimy. So we're going to make our uh, string worms really slimy by putting them in the paint. So you can go ahead and do that now. Put your paint out and cover them in worms. Grown-ups, this is going to get messy. So if you want to pause and do this outside, I get it. Okay, and it's also going to have step-by-step -step directions in that blog post I told you about before, so you can do it whenever you'd like or whenever you've got the space and the time to do it. So I've got my worms in my paint right now. Now they're all slimy and they're good to go. And you're going to take your worms and you're going to place them wherever you want on your picture. Okay. And remember, worms can make any shape they want. They um, are sort of squiggly in their body. They can curl up really tight or they can stretch really long. Remember that stretch and pull, stretch and pull. So you can put them in any position you want. So I'm going to put my worm like that, my first worm. And then I'm going to take my second worm. It's a big fat worm. So I'm going to put my big fat worm like that. Well, he's not, he's not, I'm going to move him around a little bit. There we go. I like that better. And then you're going to take your second piece of paper and you're going to place it right on top of your worms. Okay. And you're going to press down lightly. So I'm going to take my piece of paper and I'm going to press down on top of my worm painting. And then I'm going to pull back the paper. And now I've got two worm paintings. So I've got the worm painting right there. And I have this one right here. Does that look like worms? It does. And then as soon as your painting dries, you can add more details of the other decomposers we talked about here. So here's a close-up of our finished worm painting. Okay, so after the paint dried, we added um, segments to our worms with marker. So you can see he's got all of his little lines on him now. And this little worm, he's peeking up over the ground because we added the, the dirt line and the grass. And then we added these roots here because that's what's so great about worms. They're helping our plants to grow by, again, making it easier for the plants to find water and get those nutrients that they need to go big and strong. And then I added some more decomposers, my little pill bugs, because I just love them so much. And then my millipede and my little millipede here curled up. I love it. You can make your underground look however you'd like it to look. You can add as many or as few details as you like, as long as you do it together as a family. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had as much fun as I did. I hope your journals are full of really cool worm observations. So if you draw some great pictures or you go out and explore with your family and you want to share it with us, we have a place where you can share it. We would love to see your worm drawings. We would love to see your family's uh, adventures outside. You don't have to go far. Explore your backyard. Explore your uh, neighborhood park. Just do it together. Take great notes. Take pictures and talk. Talk, talk, talk about all the neat things out in nature. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I hope to see you next week for our next Nature Science with Holly webinar. See ya. Thanks, Holly. That was great. Let's get back to um, our slides so we can wrap this up. Um, I, just, I learned so much. I watched it a second time with you today. What's really great about the way we approach this is that by Holly pre-recording this for us, she's able to chat with you as it's happening in case you have any questions. And I saw some come in, you know, can I use worms from my yard and, you know, other really great questions. Uh, I hope that you really took a page out of Holly's book about how she engages when she reads a book. Because if we, we could all read that book and read the words in it, but by the way Holly elevates it for us, by really getting the engagement, I think uh, we all get so much more out of it. So thanks again for that, Holly. So this um, is the full book set for this science series. And I did just want to let you know that 
these books will be at shoppecker.com as a book set. If you'd like to place an order for that now, I believe they'll be shipping next week. We did run into some problems with our kitchen science book set. And if anybody's on the call today that has not received that set yet, our apologies. It, um, I believe, was being sent out yesterday. So we did run into some challenges. Um, this book set will be coming will be ship, shipping out next week so please feel free to place an order if you'd like to the advantage to purchasing these books is that you have like a nature science unit ready to go with all the activities that holly will be introducing her blog posts with added resources you'll have everything you need to kind of um, bring this back into your classrooms when you get started again Oh, oh, I forgot to mention the promo code. Don't forget, write it down. The promo code will get you free shipping for this book set. Um, I know I'm one of those people that I get to the end of an order and you know, then you see the shipping charge and you say, oh, forget it. So we really wanted to make sure that these books were easily accessible to you. So we are offering this code to the people that are in, in this webinar. And we, I wanted to share some other resources that will also support this type of unit of study for nature science. Uh, Holly had shown, and I have actually have to have my own copy of this here today. So this is the nature science um, explorer notebook that Holly referenced. And we also offer these science journals just to show the interior pages. There's lots of room for children to write or draw or uh, do data recording with the grid pages. So those are also available on our website. We also do offer a compost container. So if there's another way you'd like to introduce composting to your students, this is a great way to do that. That's the interior of the um, Explorer. Here's what I found and happens to have a little worm in there. So highly relevant to you. And then just to let you know that our next session is going to be fruits and seeds, same time, same place next Wednesday at four o'clock. These are the materials you will need if you do not like using or if your policies are against using real food in art activities. There are other ways, other workarounds. You could do sponges, cut in the shape of fruits or vegetables or even use possibly plastic fruits or vegetables if you'd like to participate in this. So um, if anybody wants to jot that down, I'll jump back to it in a minute. Any last minute questions, please let us know. And here's Holly's daughter when she was much littler. And um, we would all love to see you again next Wednesday, July 15th. Please uh, feel free to share this. It's not too late for people to join in. If you've experienced it today and you can think of friends, colleagues, other people that happen to love nature or love these subjects, let them know. Um, send them to our website where they can link to the registration page. We welcome more people to join so that we can share as much of this as we can. Thank you, Holly. Um, I know that I have now, I'm now a fan of worms. I never was before, but next time I see a worm on the sidewalk, he will be rescued or she will be rescued by me. Well, then I've done my duty. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, I was hoping I would get to chime in one last time since I'm rambling I mean, if away. I've done nothing else, I've saved a couple of worms. <laughs> uh, the promo code, I'm going to go back to that slide. Somebody just asked to show that. Uh, so there's our promo code for the free shipping for the for the book set. We hope some people will take advantage of that. Uh, we surely hope you come back next week. Twenty. Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Nature science. I think um, Terry was mixing up our kitchen science book set. So our, our nature science book set promo code is nature science books NSB20 for free shipping. I'm so excited. Are you looking at the chat, Holly? I, I am. I am. So yeah. um, if you want to uh, do the activities again with your families, it's all going to be available. Um, the recording's going to be available, so you'll be able to watch it again and see pieces you missed. Um, and I think we're going to put that in the chat, probably, the link to the 
Yes, um, that link, definitely. Mm -hmm. If Marilyn, you can throw that link in the chat, that would be great. And uh, Rob just reminded me to remind everybody here, if you'd like to watch a recording of this, it is going to be up on our the Becker School Supplies YouTube page. So there just it is, right there in the chat. Oh, look at that. And, oh, somebody else said something else I wanted to respond to, and what was it? Oh, a really good question, Chari, about uh, purchasing books separately. I, I do understand that happens a lot with our book set. Some, some people already have some of these titles. So, yes, um, all of these books will be available individually as well. Fair question. When can you register for next week? Stacy? more good news. When you register for this session, you are automatically registered for the full series. So uh, I'm so glad you brought that up because maybe not everybody realized that. So the way we set these up, these are called our webinar series and um, we, we tend to do them in chunks of four. So when you register for one, you are automatically registered for all four because we don't want you to miss anything. We've got lots of great stuff planned for the next three. Next week is fruits and seeds right. and cool stuff like that. And then we're going to be doing uh, animal adaptations. And we're going to talk all about the cool things animals do to, to um, stay happy and healthy. And then finally, we're ending with some dinosaur fossils. Oh, Everyone right loves cool. dinosaurs. I did want to show, what did I want to show again on the slide um, that I thought people might want to see? Let's see. Oh, just if they wanted to see this list again of the materials. Now, what I do is uh, the reminders that go out the day before and an hour before the next session, I will again list these materials. So um, it also should have been on your original registration page, the list of materials. Feel free to email us if you, if you want to um, have them again, we can surely send them to you. And like Leslie mentioned, if you don't, um, if you can't or don't want to use fresh fruits or veggies, you can use sponges or you can use even the plastic fruit from your uh, kitchen centers or from your kids' play box. Um, those are <laughs> even easier to clean, honestly. <laughs> so, oh, good. Great idea. Yeah. Uh, Joan, what's your granddaughter's name? She, uh, she loved it. We'd like to thank her for coming today. We have Rylan. Ah. So it's, it's so fun to know that there are children out there yeah. kind of listening in and enjoying. Um, did anybody count how many times Holly talked about worm poop? <laughs> I mean, honestly, I lost count. <laughs> I, I warned you. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, let's see. I hope we have all of our questions answered. And so I'm probably going to shut my video off. You've seen enough of me for a while. I'll um, keep chatting with you in the chat box. I think Holly will stay here a few minutes longer and chat with you as well. And then I'll give you a little warning before we're gonna sign off for the afternoon. Thanks so much for joining us. Yep. Any questions, just put them in the chat box.